What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's game week 29 here on Sora NBA. Let's jump into who I've got in my lineups and some tips for players who I think are going to score really well this week. If you're not already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Drop a like on the video and also put your Sora handle down below because if I do win a card in common champion, if I win one of the limited cards coming in the top 1000, I'll be giving it away here. So make sure your Sora handle is down below. Without further ado, let's jump into the lineups. So we'll start off with rare champion for me. This pretty much picks itself. I've got Jalen Brown here. A lot of the players this week have got one game. There's a couple of the teams that have two, but even then I wouldn't really stress too much about it. Normally it's good to have two games, but at the moment so many have one. I wouldn't really so many have one game. I wouldn't really stress about it too much. So for me, Jalen Brown will go in uh, an L10 of 41. He'll be my uh, my MVP for this Red Champion team. Anthony Edwards is lucky enough to have two, but because they're back to backs, so there's probably a chance that they're going to sit anyway. Uh, he's actually playing, there's a few games on on my birthday. My birthday's on the 28th. Uh, I'm going to become an old man is, uh, is the only way I can describe it from there. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., again, also someone I picked up last week. He has two games. He's got a quite a high L10 for Jaron Jackson Jr. at the moment, and he's still a bit iffy since he's come back from his injuries, what I'll say. Steven Adams has just gone out for, I think it was four to six weeks. They've diagnosed him for that he's sitting, which could impact him in some end, but we'll wait and see across the time for it. They'll, they'll have to change a few things up, but... Again, two games in L10 of 40, which then means that I could also slot in Caleb Martin, who I bought weeks back. And as soon as I bought him, he got injured. He's luckily got two games. And Andrew Nemhard has an L10 of 22. He did miss the last two games with an illness. I'm hoping he's back for them, at least one of the games here. Um, and yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But this is my rare champion lineup. That's where we are with it. As a result of which, Rare Contender pretty much picks itself for me. It's a shame I can't squeeze in Gary Trent Jr. I know he's got an L10 of 37, which is still quite high, but he's been playing really well so Rare score-wise for the Raptors recently. He's always getting at least his L10, apart from that last game here. He's been getting up really good, consistent 40s and even low 50s at some points. So for Rare Contender, I like to have a guy like that, but couldn't really work out. We've got Kevin Knox of one game. He's been in and around the rotation a bit more with the Pistons. I know he didn't play in the next game, but he'll normally get sort of 10 solid minutes in that backup unit. And for Kevin Knox, and if they're in a blowout loss, there's a chance he comes in anyway. But for an alternate 10, that's fine. Joe Harris has his starting unit spot. He's not scoring particularly great. He had that one game against the Warriors. But in any case, I'm not really a massive fan of, of Joe Harris here. But... I've got him, I'm going to play him. I'm not looking to really, I don't think I'm going to do well in Rare Contender enough to go out and make some like sizable spending, to make some sizable sort of acquisitions this week. So for now, I'll, I'll, I'll just go off what I've got in my gallery. Jaden Ivey fits. Uh, I picked him up a couple weeks back off Gnome. You've probably seen him as well. Um, L10 and 23, decent match against the, the Rockets. There's scope here for him to score quite high. RJ Barrett again against Brooklyn. 32 L10 in and around what you'd expect him to get. There is scope for him to get low 40s. Uh, and then Andrew Wiggins, who did miss the last game with an illness, but this is in two, three days' time now. So fingers crossed. We'll wait and see. But realistically, your two main scorers this week for me would be RJ Barrett and Andrew Wiggins. You've got Joe Harris and Jaden Ivey, who you'd expect to get in and around their L10s. And then you're hoping Kevin Knox can sort of get 18 to 20. And then you're in and around a tier four, tier five card. That's my maximum hopes for this lineup this week. Uh, I will mention that there is the new rare underdog mode this week. I did sell quite a few of my rares the other week in the hype for this. So you can kind of see when so rare announced competitions, you can see fluctuations in prices. Now, rare underdog explained, I believe this came from the football side of things. There's no MVP and unlike rare contender where your cap is uh, basically the same, but without an MVP, this is a 60 point cap. So you need very, very low tier five, tier four cards normally. Jonathan Isaac would be an absolute game breaker for this this week, I'm sure of it with his L10 and zero. But I simply, I sold all mine off. I sold guys that I didn't have, like Jemzy Mitu who's an eight. He went 30. Oh, no, he was in a trade for Jaron Jackson Jr., in fact. But I sold all of these guys off in an anticipation. Dwight Powell had an L10 of 12. I sold him for two and a half times what I paid for. So you can kind of get in and around. Depends how you want to do it. You can have the cards and play them. There's strats to play really low scoring, like ones and two guys, and then play two 
sort of 25 guys there's different strategies for it if it sticks around and it comes back as a prominent permanent feature then you can look into it more but if you don't have the gallery for it i wouldn't stress it for, for this week it's a it's a positive sign though it's nice that so rare it's good to see that so rare are putting in new competitions that are incorporating rares and super rares and not just limited and limiteds and commons so my limited champion lineup this week i'm actually going to go for nikola vucevic as my mvp in this one he has an l10 of 47 but he's got it's because it's the magic i've got a feeling you know going back to the magic he's going to want to prove something that's my theory anyway i don't know what his projections are but i'm going to go off of that sort of ikb that i know better mentality as which for for the predictions we've also got Jar Morant in there with an l10 of 43 now this is pretty much his what you'd expect a floor of Jar Morant to be as i'd say is in the, the low 40s with two games minnesota and the pacers i'm hoping for good things here there is he always is getting these questionable tags at the moment, so there's a chance he sits one of these games, but I'll take the two. Jonas Valanciunas, I won a couple of weeks back. 34 is, again, I'd say nearing on his ceiling now for his L10, but it's also near his floor. He's a pretty much a base player. The sort of Bruce Browns of my gallery, you kind of know what you're going to expect from him. Terrence Mann's an L10 of 22. I quite like this pick on the premise that there's rumours that Terrence Mann is going to be, the like, well, the, the Clippers think that he's good enough to be their starting point guard towards the end of the season now. John Ball's sitting out for a while anyway. And if Kawhi or Paul George do sit, then Terrence Mann has scope to see an increase in his usage rate. And then lastly, Dylan Brooks. I've been banging on about Dylan Brooks now for two weeks. He will have a game where he doubles this L10. His usage rate and how much of a good player Dylan Brooks is, a 21 L10 is far, far too low for him. Again, the two games here, there's a chance he sits. He sat two games the other week, which really cost me. But there's a chance for him to explode here. And this is what you need in Limited Champion. I really like Dylan Brooks as a pick this week. So along with Rare Underdog, the other new one this week is the Limited Eastern Conference. Conference. It's come back. This was here a little while back and it's made its return. In this one, I've got Joel Embiid, so he'll be my MVP for this. He's a solid Eastern Conference MVP guy. And I've also got Scotty Barnes, 42L10, quite high for him, but again, two games. You're hoping in that Golden State game they wrestle their main guys, even though I've got Andrew Wiggins in it. If they wrestle their main guys, there's scope for the Raptors to really roll the Warriors there. Franz Wagner's been doing really, really well for the Magic recently. The Magic have been on a, a solid run for, for Orlando in general. He's a good he's a good scorer. There's always scope for him to get in the 50s, which he's done a couple of times now. Bradley Beal, one game. It's not great for Bradley Beal in this sense. He's still coming back from that sort of quad injury that he had. He probably still got a bit of rust on, on everything. But L10 of 31, he fits nice in. It means that I can then throw Matisse Thibault in, who is coming off that Brooklyn game where he played really well. It'll be different with Denver. You can never really know at the moment, I find, with, with Matisse Thibault and sort of where they're going to fit him in in the rotation. He starts Sixers win, but it doesn't really translate well in terms of how well he plays on the court for the Sixers for terms of so rare points. So he fits this lineup. If I if I win someone in limited contender this week, I'm currently on for a tier three and they fit in this lineup. I might jig it about a bit, but for now, this will be my limited Eastern Conference team. So yeah, limited contender lineup is pretty much as expected. I always like having that one main sort of stellar guy. Darren Fox will be that for me this week with an L10 of 40. He's got his ceiling and floor in and around this 40 mark. So you just got to hope. There, there's scope for him to get in the 50s and 60s on so rare. So you just got to hope in this one game you get lucky. Drew Eubanks, um, he's been in the rotation a bit more with the Blazers. He came off that other night against the, the Lakers. It was a stellar performance. You can hope. There, there is definitely potential for Drew Eubanks always to at least double his L10. Bol Bol, two games, L10 of 20, in and around. That depends on the rotation, the magic for that time. But because they're back-to-backs, -back, you can hopefully see Bol Bol get some more action. Chris Boucher, again, two games, L10 of 18, which is fairly reasonable for, for Chris Boucher on the upside. He's got two games against the Warriors and the Trailblazers. You can just hopefully hope he sees a bit more action. They always prefer Coloco in the, on the Raptor side of things, so just depends what Nick Nurse is doing on his rotation that night. And then Luke Kennard, the only concern I have with him is his calf injury has been all season long. If it happens again and there's a few more questionable doubts around him before the lock, I might change it, but... And it depends if I win someone or if I see someone that is of an L10 or 17 when I go and do some scouting at the moment, then yeah, I'll throw him in. But for the time being, that'll be my lineup. I'm not going to be around on the lock. As I said, I'm going to be out for my birthday, but this is where my teams are this week. I'll uh... actually wait. I've also got the common stuff to show you through, so I'll run them through them now. So stay with me as we'll pick the common champion team right here. So this again will be if I win in common champion here, any card, if it's in the limited cards that I can trade, 
in the top 1000 i'll be giving it away to one of you guys so make sure you leave your solo handle down below in the comments so i can pick one of you at random so into building the team i know i said that one and two games this week it isn't it's not really mattering who you pick in terms of that but because yanis has two games and there's also they're not back to backs i think yanis is a, an absolute must this week for common champion it's the same thing with bam out of bio really at 44 kawhi's been playing quite a few games but let's go and see i always say once you've got your mvp go and look at your enablers look at the guys at the bottom who have that low l10 that can enable you to get someone of a decent a decent value so i've mentioned him before but i still like his eye and steen as a pick he seems to be in the rotation a bit more and he's projecting really well so even though he's got one game i'll throw him in there as that low option that then gives me 36 across the last three players so if i scroll here i can sort of see if there's any guys in the 20s that i like benedict matherin's not bad carl lowry at 22 is quite low yeah we're going to pick carl lowry as well so that then leaves me 43 for the last two guys which is like unbelievable value that we can get here so we could pick anthony edwards we can go drew holiday i quite like anthony edwards we'll throw him in that leaves 46 that means i can throw bam Adebayo in there so i've got sort of i would class three mvp tier guys along with two guys here that their l10s are so low that you would expect them to definitely smash them and that's what you're looking for in common champion so that's that they're all my teams there on screen i'll scroll up to show you the other common contender was the common contender in the common eastern conference ones along with the common champion make sure you leave your solo handle down below so i can give away the card if we do win in common champion best of luck for your teams this game week and we'll see you in the next one peace